Okay, so this is video number seven. We're gonna talk about Carabiner, what it is, how to set it up. So what is it? It's just a keyboard customizer for Mac OS. I'm going to install it first, so it's easier to understand how the package works. If you haven't installed Brew yet, go and check out video number two in the series. So let me grab the command to install Carabiner. Just gonna paste it here in my terminal. It's gonna take a few minutes, so I'm gonna pause this and see you when it's done. It's gonna ask you for your password, so make sure you type it in. Okay, so now the installation is complete. You're gonna see these two pop-ups. You can dismiss them. Okay, after installing the app, we're gonna open it. And it's going to ask you for permissions. So you have to open the one that says Carabiner Elements. Okay, so just click on Open System Settings here. Click on Allow. It's going to ask you for your password. Type it in. Let me close this. In case you get other pop ups asking you to give permission to these two, Go ahead and um, give the required permissions. So I set up my Carabiner configuration using the repo below. This repo translates from TypeScript code, which is shorter, it's like around 400 lines, to the Carabiner configuration file, which is around 2,000 lines. We're going to see what I mean in a little while. Do you need this repo? No, but it's way easier to manage all the different mappings. Since we already configured the dot files in video number four, Carabiner will automatically load the configuration we set up in that video, and the mappings are gonna start working automatically after installing it. If you haven't watched that video, go and watch it so you can clone my dot files and you can have a working config and go from there. All my mappings can be found in the dot files directory. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the directory, remember that we cloned the github.files public, so I just switched to that directory. Let me open my editor, and let me go to the folder, Carabiner. Here's the file for the mappings, it's called rules.ts. So here's where all the mappings are configured. For example, this is very important, the hyper key is caps lock, so when you press caps lock, is like if you were pressing shift, control, option, and command all at the same time. So if you leave it pressed, you're pressing those four keys. If you press caps lock by itself, it's like if you're pressing escape. This is really useful in case you use Vim. You can exit out of insert mode, for example. Okay, so here are the sub layers, and this is the way that I use Arabiner. I have the mappings here. If you notice, I have spacebar as a sub layer, and when I press any of these other keys, it takes me to the app that is shown on the right. What do I mean? So if I hold caps lock, which is the hyper key, I press spacebar, leave it pressed, and I press H, it's gonna take me to Spotify. If I do the same thing, hyper space J takes me to my terminal. If I press K, it takes me to Safari. And the same thing for the rest of the apps. If I want to go to Obsidian, I press hyper space L. It's going to open Obsidian. It's the first time that I'm opening the app. And the same thing for the rest of each one of these apps. I also create shortcuts for YouTube. In ChatGPT, let me show you how I do that. I do them with Chrome. Okay, so when I open Chrome, I go to YouTube. I come here. More tools, create shortcut. Leave it the default name. Make sure you tick this option. The name has to match in my mappings. Same thing for ChatGPT, for example. Let me create the shortcut for that. Make sure you select this option, open as window. The name has to match what I have configured here. So now I can go to my apps real fast if I wanna go 
Safari, if I want to go to YouTube, if I want to go to ChatGPT, if I want to go to Obsidian. Okay, so what are some of the other mappings I have configured besides moving between apps? Something important, if the app that you're trying to use is not installed, nothing is going to happen. So if I press I to go to Slack, nothing happens because this is my personal computer. If the app is not installed, the mapping is not going to do anything. So you can leave the mapping there and use it in your work computer, for example, but not on your personal computer. So other mappings I use, for example, in Raycast, if I need to search for something in Google, just press hyper R. And press the letter K to perform a Google search. I'm going to click here, always open command. Let me do that again. This is just an easy way for me to start a Google search. I have other Raycast mappings here. For system settings, I can increase or decrease the volume by pressing the letter S. So hyper S, and then I press J and K to increase or decrease the volume. I can also move between tabs in my browser. If I press hyper S, H and L, these are Vim motions. So I can move across the tabs really easy. I also can increase or decrease the brightness with U and I. I also use it to change songs to go to the previous next song, to pause it, to lock the screen, close a browser tab, change audio source, a lot, a lot of other different things. Better touch tool, I use some mappings there as well. And some other important ones I use for BIM navigation. You notice these are the BIM E bindings, H, J, K, and L. So what do I use these for? Let's say that I'm in my browser. I press hyper and I'm pressing K to go up, J to go down. Or let's say, for example, that I'm in the notes app. I am going to paste some text here. I can navigate using the motions, go up, down, left, or right. I'm pressing hyper and then one of the keys listed here. These always have to be at the very bottom of your file, the ones without any sub, sub layers. Okay, so I like switching my Raycast hotkey to hyper G. So I'm gonna do that right now. I just press hyper and G. That is what I'm going to use to open Raycast. And the paste app, I also like to switch it to use hyper W. Go to settings, shortcuts, hyper W. I can go to my clipboard with hyper W. And I can also open Raycast with hyper G. Okay, so all my mappings are statically configured at the moment but you might want to use different mappings. So we're going to do that right now. Every time we modify this file, the rules.cs, we want it to automatically update this carabiner.json file, which is the carabiner configuration. So we're going to use the repo that we saw above this one. So to do that first, we need to install the dependencies and run the build. Here are the commands, so let me run them. Gonna exit out of this, paste the commands. Gonna take a few minutes, I'm gonna pause and see when it's done. Okay, the installation is complete. If you wanna see what each of the commands do, I left a description of each one of them here. So now every time that we modify the rules.cs file, we need to run this command to apply the changes to the carabiner.json file. But instead of doing that, we're gonna run a watch command, which is gonna run the build automatically if changes to the file happen. Let me do that right now so I can show you what this means.
Okay, I switched to the repo, mxstbr. I'm going to run the yarn run watch command right now. Let me open NeoVim again. Let me go to the rules.cs file. So every time I make a change here, that's going to automatically update the carabiner.json file. You notice how it changed. Let me revert the changes back and it's going to change the file automatically. Notice that it changed it. And this is because of the watch command that we have here on the right side. It's a little bit better, but we don't want to manually run that watch command every time we're working with the mappings. So instead of running that watch command, we're going to create a script that is going to start when the computer boots up and it's going to watch that file automatically and apply the changes to the carabiner file. This is a script that I created. You can just copy and paste the code in the terminal. We're going to do it right now, but I'm going to explain briefly what it does. Here it runs the yarn run watch command and we set up the working directory, which is the repo. I specified some log files here as well. So let me run this. I'm gonna close out of this with control C. Okay, so the file was created. You're gonna get this pop-up. You can dismiss it. Let's look at the file. Okay, here's the file that we just created. It's not loaded yet. So we have to load the file with this command right here. Okay, the file is loaded. Now, every time that we modify the rules.cs file, all the changes will be applied automatically without us running the watch command. Let me do that right now. Let me change this to B. You're gonna notice that the carabiner.json file changed automatically. Let me switch it back. and it changed the file automatically. So now we don't have to worry about running the watch command or running the build. Every time we restart the computer, this file that we created on the right is going to load automatically and watch for changes in the rules.cs file and apply them to the carabiner.json file for us. If for any reason you need to unload or stop this script from running, you can run this command. And here are some error and log files that we created below if you want to look at those as well. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to discuss what Tmux is and how to set it up and use it in macOS. So I'll see you there.